welcome you all again for the thermodynamic lecture series so in the previous lectures we have studied about a basic second law of thermodynamics and what about the carnot cycle and duration in your carnot cycle and reversed carnot cycle and why carnot cycle is not used so in the today's lecture we are going to solve a problem on carnot cycle so problem number 1 so in a carnot cycle the maximum pressure and temperature are limited to 18 bar okay so they have said that in a carnot cycle the maximum pressure and temperature are limited to 18 bar so the maximum pressure is p1 so it is p1 is equal to 18 bar and temperature t1 is 410 degree celsius the volume ratios of isentropic compression okay so during isentropic compressions the volume ratio that is v4 by v1 is 6 and an isothermal expansion is 1.5 so it is an isothermal expansion is the process 1 to 2 and isentropic compression is a process 4 to 1 okay so in the isothermal expansion it is 1 to 2 so we can write v2 by v1 as 1.5 assume the volume of the air at the beginning of an isothermal expansion so beginning of the isothermal expansion is your process 1 to 2 so before it's entering that is after isentropic compression the isothermal expansion will occurs so in that point where the volume v1 is 0.18 meter cube they asked to draw the carnot cycle pv and ts diagram and to determine the pressure and temperature at all the points so we need to find out pressure and temperature at all the points and also thermal efficiency of the cycle so with this given data so we can move on so in this problem we need to find it out the pressure and temperature at all the main points and also we need to find out the thermal efficiency of the cycle okay so here so process 1 to 2 is your isothermal expansion in the carnot cycle and process 2 to 3 is your isentropic expansion and 3 to 4 is your isothermal compression and 4 to 1 is your isentropic compression here we said that the pressures are p1 p2 p3 and p4 and the volumes are v1 v2 v3 and v4 here so first one we need to draw the pv diagram and also ts diagram here so for an isothermal process the temperature t1 which is equal to t2 here and also it since it is an isentropic process so the entropy is equal in this case so we can write s2 is equal to s3 and also there is no heat transfer in your isentropic expansion process for that 3 to 4 is your isothermal expansion so we have said that t3 is equal to t4 and 4 to 1 is your isentropic compression again so first one with the given data they have given a volume ratio so volume ratio says v4 by v1 is 6 okay so we can find it out v4 is equal to 6 into v1 so v1 is given as 0.18 meter cube so volume v4 as 1.08 meter cube and also they have given v2 by v1 is 1.5 okay then you substitute v2 is equal to 1.5 into v1 as we all know v1 is 0.18 so v2 is equal to 0.27 meter cube and the isothermal expansion considering the process 1 to 2 isothermal expansion p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 because the temperature is constant in the isothermal expansion so we can write the equation like this so from this equation we can write p1 by p2 which is equal to v2 by v1 so in the given data they have given p1 okay so substitute in the value of si units so 18 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per meter square divided by p2 which is equal to the ratios are given v2 by v1 ratio is given 1.5 so you can apply you can get the p2 as 12 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per meter square again you consider a process 4 to 1 so 4 to 1 is your isentropic compression or reversible adiabatic process so what is an isentropic uh, pvt relation here that is t4 by t1 is equal to p4 by p1 whole to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma which is equal to v1 by v4 whole to the power of gamma minus 1 so with this um, pvt relation i am writing temperature and volume that is equating temperature and volume first since in the problem it is a carnot cycle so we can take the working fluid as air so adiabatic index gamma is 1.4 this volume ratio v4 by v1 is given as 6 in the problem so you can take 1 by 6 here and t1 is al already we know so t4 is equal to 333.54 kelvin what is t4 t4 is equal to t3 since it is an isothermal compression process again i can equate pressure and volume then you will get p4 by p1 whole to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma which is equal to v1 by v4 whole to the power of gamma minus 1 then we can cancel this gamma minus 1 gamma minus 1 bring this gamma to this side then your equation becomes p4 by p1 which is equal to v1 by v4 whole to the power of 
comma then you substitute all the values you get p4 is equal to 1.46 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per meter square then you go for process 2 to 3 again this 2 to 3 is your isentropic expansion or reversible adiabatic process here is also if you if we say it is an isentropic we have apply a pvt relation for isentropic so that is t2 by t3 which is equal to p2 by p3 whole to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma which is equal to v3 by v2 whole to the power of gamma minus 1. So with that pvt relation I am equating temperature and volume first. So t2 by t3 which is equal to v3 by v2 whole to the power of gamma minus 1. You substitute the values. Here we know v2 is 2, two into v1. So in the, first, uh, in the first case of slide we have find out v2. You can use the direct value or otherwise you can substitute 2 into v1. Okay. Then you will get v3 is 3.45 meter cube. Then I can equate temperature and pressure. What I can get? You substitute all the values to get the pressure in terms of Newton per meter square. So before you are substituting, you substitute all the values in terms of Newton per meter square. When you substitute this in Newton per meter square, your answer will be of Newton per meter square. Okay. That you have to be very very careful. Before substituting, you convert all the values in SI units, then you substitute. Then as a third one, third case, we need to find out the efficiency. What is the efficiency of the Carnot cycle? That is th minus tl divided by th that is t1 minus t3 divided by your t1 what is t1 here t1 is 683 and t3 is triple 3.54 divided by 683 so if you want to convert into percentage you have to multiply with 100 then your efficiency becomes 51.16 percentage okay so pressure p1 pressure and temperature of all the salient points they have asked In the first question they have asked about pv diagram okay so the pv diagram and ts diagram we have drawn and they are asked pressure and temperature at all the salient points. In addition to that, I have find all the volumes also. And the third case, they are need to find out efficiency. P1 is given in the question. P2, P3, P4 is find it out. Then V1 is given. In addition to that, I am finding out the volumes also. Okay, so V2, V3 and V4. And the temperature, T1 is given in the question. So T1 is given, that is equal to T2. So if you find it out T3, then it is equal to T4. That is also, we have find it out. And last one, we have find it out efficiency as 51.16 percentage of this corner cycle problem. Thank you.